What's good? It's your boy Zara, All Rights Reserved. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Comment Their Nation, Greatest Nation Since United Nations. We in here and we got to get busy. Okay. Check this out. Justin Bieber has recently canceled. He canceled his tour. Okay. His tour was called Justice. All right. The Justice Tour. He canceled it. So he canceled Justice. This is his will. This is what he's doing. Remember, we saw Wayne say he doesn't want to be number seven. Now we see Justin Bieber cancel justice. OK, understand it's a tour. He was on tour. All right. And changed his mind and said, I'm not going to go on tour no more. So. Tour, touring and traveling are one and the same. Psalms chapter 91, verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Period. Right there. Psalms 121, verse 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. He's in charge over us, watching over us at all times. Turning to us is our choice. We have free will, but he's always there. See, he's never not there for you to turn. You can't say, oh, you weren't there. You can't. When people say God wasn't there, no, you didn't turn to him. It was your choice. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and whom? Who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. See, you got to step up to the to the case. You got to step up and say, I got it. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. A man's heart devises this his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. If you're not with the Lord, could thy God. You're walking in your own ways. So everything you're doing is because you want to. It's not because that's what needs to be done. You're working off your own cognition, which is evil. It's wicked. It's against God. He told you rely on him, but you're not. You're doing what you want to do. And that's wicked. <laughs> okay. Because our nature is wicked. We have to turn to him to make everything right. You know, there's many things you got to do. But the first thing is seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ. Period. There's nothing else around that. Psalms 119, 105. None. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your your path is darkness. You're, you're walking in darkness because you choose to. You don't want to turn to him. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 23. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. You're stumbling all the time. These guys are running into problems all the time, and no matter where they turn, because they're not seeking a relationship with Christ. You don't believe. So you're always turning and something else is happening. This, that, 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 that. You're constantly going through turmoil and strife. Constantly. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, like I told you, but that all should come to repentance. All of you. He's long suffering. He's literally taking it on the chin, like, all right, fine. They don't want to come to me, whatever. He's swallowing it and sucking it up, like, whatever. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to take that. Cool, cool. Turning his head, like, I'll let them slide. He's letting you slide. He's not going to at some point, though. So you got to you got to turn Matthew chapter 28. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. When you seek a relationship with him and you walk with him the best you can through all strife, he stays with you till the end. You got to come back and repent whenever he wants you to, whenever you mess up. That, that means he sticks with you. Without him there, you're walking in darkness, like I said. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 30. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee as a man doeth bear his son in all the way that ye went until ye came into this place. He's there waiting for you. He's literally there waiting for you to come to him. He's like, come to me, come to me. And he sees you walking towards him. Then he sees you turn around. He's like, he's going to come. Everybody's like, wow. They're, he's like, they're going to come back. They're going to come back. He's counting on you, trusting that you're going to be there. Now, it was a justice tour. This is the. This right here is the one that hits the hardest. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 15. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Simple. Amos chapter 5, verse 24. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. When you're speaking in righteousness, standing for what's right, stand. He's with you. Anybody coming against you, 
They're risk risking destruction because they're in iniquity. Come on, man. This this is no joke. How's this fake? Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Again, he says this. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. We're supposed to be here waiting on him, thinking of him, doing his works, telling people about him, spreading the good word. That's what it stands for, the good word, the good report. You're supposed to be spreading the good reports of what he does for you. That's how you bring people back to God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Believe the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. You're supposed to let people know, look, you got to do this, you got to do that. So if you're reproving an evil act and someone got a problem, they got a problem with God, not you. They got a problem with God. So he's going to deal with it. They got to uh, soften their heart and listen. Micah chapter six, verse eight. He has shewed thee, O man, what is good and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but do to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. People aren't humble. They're like, I'm me. I'm me. I deserve this. I deserve that. You got to be humble and go to him praying, Lord, please. You guys don't be humble. You be cocky, talking mess like I deserve this. I deserve that. No, you don't. You, We all deserve death before God. We got to be humble to him, thanking him. He kept us alive. Isaiah chapter 61, verse eight. For I love, I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering and I will direct their work and truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. We're everlasting his children. He doesn't hold you apart. He doesn't judge you unrighteously. He keeps you there. Even when you're doing wrong. Not always though. At, when it comes to a certain part, he's going to be done with that. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. We're supposed to turn the other cheek. But also we judge righteously. You address it how God wants you to. You got to read to know how. Zechariah chapter 7 verse 9. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and shew mercy and compassion to every man to his brother. To everyone. Like I said, Psalms 106 verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. That is what we're trying to do. You got to try and be righteous at all times. You got to try. He knows you won't perfectly do it. He perfectly did it. So we can't. But we're supposed to try at all times. That is what your mind, you should be thinking this every day, every second of the day. How can I be righteous? Lord, show me. How can I do it righteous? Lord, show me. All times, people get tired like I'm going to do what I want. And that's why God takes their blessings. Psalms 106 verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Once again, all right. He tells you things multiple times. Romans chapter 13, verse four, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that, which is evil, be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Just right there. I told you Christ's believers are not weak. They're not weak. He lets them get justice righteously. So if you do something wrong and you try and come somewhere else to do something wrong, he's going to allow them to rock you. Like I told you. You're not you're not getting away with it because you're evil. No, your wickedness opens you up to be killed and sent to hell. Literally. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 26. A righteous man falling down before the wicked as a troubled fountain in a corrupt spring. You're not to placate to the wicked. You're not to join in like, yeah, I know. I know, man. You're supposed to call them out at all times. Like, yo, that was wrong. You can't do that. Yo, you got to change. We can't do that. Yo, why'd you do that? Stop. People are wicked and don't like being called out or, or reproved. But when you do it with Christ in mind, he'll give you the authority and power. You gain that through Christ. All right. Now, real quick, let's talk about this because then we're going to get back. See, Justin Bieber, he has a lot of health issues going on. Part of it is because he's touring around, worried about everything but what's righteous. He's not worried about that. He's worried about I'm doing what I want to do. He needs to turn to God. He got to turn to Christ. If he don't turn to Christ, he's in danger. As we saw with his sickness, he's in danger. You turn to Christ or you're in pure danger because he's not with you. Okay. 
Psalms chapter 37. We're going to start at verse 27 here. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Like I just said, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. If you, that's what I'm saying. You got to turn to him, especially if you had family or grew around parents, you know, we're wicked. You got to turn them because their curses are upon you. They never believed and they never did his work. So you definitely got to find God because you finding God will bring blessings back to your inheritance. Like you can curse your generation, your, your bloodline. You can curse it. Your parents may have already cursed you. You got to bring back the purity to it by serving him. He'll bless you and bring it back and bless them. And they'll not know where it's coming from. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 24. He has saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. And a good blessing shall come upon them. When we rebuke evil, like I told you, when battle rap, when the bloggers rebuke battle rappers and call them out for evil, they're blessed. God blesses them because they're doing his work. You're supposed to call evil at, at all times. Address evil at all times. You don't placate to it and say, you're good, you're good. You're, you're good, man. We're cool. No, you tell them that was wrong. Yo, we got to do better. All right, man, I'm sorry. Let's do better. Right, just like that. Like, <laughs> you got to find a relationship with God for yourself. If you don't, you're going to be in wickedness, walking in darkness, in danger at all times. You need him. You need him. Like, you need, need him. For real. Justin, you need God in your life. Now, I saw other people I called you out, but I'm telling you, you need God. That's how you're going to defeat whatever ill means you're going through, whatever ailments are causing you to look that way, happen like that. You're just still trying to pursue the money, doing what you want without seeking God, saying, I'm going to be fine. The doctor got me. No, you need God. He's going to give that doctor the hands, the mind, the feet to walk and help you, to do what you need to cure you. God works through people. <laughs> he works through them. You can't just rely on them. He works through them when you pray for them. He'll take their hands and make them do what they got to do to help heal you. That's what you need. Period. There's nothing else that's going to heal you. You're looking for other solutions. It's not going to work. You're trying to do it a roundabout way to not in incur with God. You have to concur with God. All right. My help. Um, This is oh, excuse me. Psalms chapter 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Three, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Four, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Five, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. Six, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Seven, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Eight, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from the time forth and even forevermore right there. That's it right there. That That's the answer. That's all. Justin, you need to find God. You need to go to Jesus and have a conversation on your knees, praying and not in public, in your closet, your quiet place. You need to pray to him. And this is to all anybody who's afflicted or dealing with stuff. You got to pray to him and ask him to lead you. He, you need him to lead you. There's no other way. You need him. You can't make it without Christ. You, uh, when I say make it, I mean make it to where you want to be. Do whatever you want. You know where you're headed. You know where you're headed. Live in however you want, whenever you want, whomever you want. Come on, man. You've done a lot. You've lived a life that not many people have got to live. It's time for you to find Christ. It's time, Justin. It's time. Now, you got called out a couple times. I'm calling you out for myself. Find Christ, man. That's how you're going to win because you guys are in a wicked industry where a lot of wickedness is going on and, and quietness, things that people don't know about, instances that people talk about for years and years. Son, you got to find Christ. Without him, you can't make it. There's no way to make it without Christ. He's literally fighting darkness around you at all times. If you don't have him, who's fighting for you? Who's intercessing for you? Who's standing up for you? Who's healing you? Who's caring you? Who's caring people around you to understand what it is in your heart that you're trying to say? You don't have it. You're in danger at all times. That's why you had to leave your tour. That's why you had to do that. Look, it's the justice tour. You literally, literally were traveling to do something, but it had nothing to do with God. So it got canceled and cut off by you. 
I'm telling you, find Christ, man. It's time, Justin. You got to seek a relationship. Seek. I'm not saying everything overnight. Seek. All rights reserved.